for Krima Media's Polity, Amalum Gilengombe. Joining me is author and Arise South Africa president, Mpo Tagada, here to discuss his book, I Am the Vision. In 2019, you were invited by President Ramaphosa to join the Presidential Commission on the Fourth Industrial Revolution. Can you tell us about the insights that you gained from that experience and how that informed the idea to write this book? I think what I learned from the Presidential Commission on the Fourth Industrial Revolution was that South Africa has a lot of challenges, but also at the same time it has a lot of wealth, there's a lot of money in our country. And I think that was a starking reality to say we've got a big problem where the nation has got lots of wealth and the people are very poor. And really we were hoping that the Fourth Industrial Revolution would allow that bridge to so that people are able to pass over from extreme poverty where over 50% of the country is living in poverty to the wealth that exists within the nation. And unfortunately, um, it was a lot of talk shops, but there was no implementation. There was no seriousness that we saw. And many of the people that were part of the commission ended up leaving the commission because of that. The book presents your beliefs and plans about the country going forward. Can you tell us why it was important for you to write this book? I think it was important for, for myself to share everything that I learned in the five years that I was a commissioner in the presidency. Um, there's a lot of solutions that we came up with, you know, uh, myself, the vice chancellor of UJ, who's now the vice chancellor of the UN University, the CEO of MTN Vodacom. There was a lot of intellectuals within the commission. And we discussed and we learned so much. And we also read about other strategies from other countries as well, how they implemented it and how they were able to help their people. And I felt that it was important for me to write down what I had learned and ensure that it's out there so that it's not things that the people of this nation don't actually know what are the solutions, but that the solutions are out there so we can begin to discuss them so people can find them and use them in order to grow and change our nation. The book implores young people to get actively involved in politics. How would an injection of youth reshape the political landscape and how should older people embrace this message? I think, you know, the youth firstly need to realize that their country is very rich. They did a research study and they found that South Africa is in the top three richest countries in the world when it comes to minerals. And these are not minerals that are already gone, no, minerals that exist. When we did a study, we found that 2.5 trillion worth of minerals is in our country. And young people need to realize that this is their country. These minerals are in their country. They can't be suffering when there's wealth in the land. That's the first thing. And I think the older generation needs to accept that they are young people which apartheid struggle heroes fought for, the Oliver Tambos, the Nelson Mandelas. These people fought so that there's liberation, there's freedom. And now, 30 years later, they're graduates that are coming out of university. They're young people that are becoming masters and, and, and getting doctorates in their field. They have the technical know-how and the knowledge on what needs to be done. We need to allow the older generation to allow them to do so, fund them, support them, and ensure that we build the new type of freedom we need in our country, which is the economic freedom which we need. What is the significance of AI and other technologies in your manifesto? I think, you know, when AI first came out, I was one of the first people to, to start playing around with it, looking at it. And when I looked at it, I realized that it's, it's a summary of all things on the internet. And I kept asking it questions to say, what does it think about South Africa? Is South Africa able to grow its economy? Are we able to have solutions? Who does it think the president of the country should be? And a lot of the answers were very amazing. So in the book, in my book, uh, I Am the Vision at the back, I ask AI to say, what type of president does South Africa need? And it says that it needs to be a youthful president, a young president. It gives the, all these reasons. And as you read the book, you begin to really see that even AI knows that South Africa is, is in need of change and that young people must lead in the nation. Can you briefly outline the policies that Arise South Africa will undertake to foster economic growth and decrease the unemployment rate? I think the first one is understanding that the small business is actually the solution to us ending the joblessness that we've got in our country. If we can fund small businesses, support small businesses, jobs can be created. Every small business should be enabled and supported to be able to create jobs. And that's really what we're saying, to say that support the small business, fund the small business. Because in the small business, that's where the jobs lie. The second thing is to reduce taxes. We believe that taxes should be reduced, especially for the small businesses, but also for outside companies that we want them to come into South Africa. We should be decreasing taxes for them as well. And we also believe that you know, young entrepreneurs should be incubated 
and fund it as well. Because when we begin to incubate and fund the young entrepreneurs, then the Facebook comes out. You know, the Tesla comes out because these were young people, the chat GPTs come out because these were young people that had ideas that just received funding in America. Let's do the same in South Africa. Let's fund our young people and allow them to unleash the ideas and the hope that they have already in their hearts. How does Arise South Africa aim to tackle the well-known criminal syndicates operating in various key sectors? I think the first thing is intelligence. Um, we've really lost what intelligence means in our country because when we now have a state where, you know, the state is more shocked about cash and transit heists than the citizens, it's an issue. When we have a state that everything happens to them by surprise, it's a very big issue. The intelligence must be brought back in our country and, and as many people know, there's too many ways for you to be able to safeguard the country through our intelligence. There's artificial intelligence, there's machine learning, there's robotics, there's so many things, there's drones. So we, we need to make sure that the intelligence of the country is well equipped to be able to watch over what is going on in the country and ensure safety for the country. And I think the only way we can do that is by restructuring our intelligence, number one, getting the crooks out, getting the right people in, getting technology in that will hold people accountable and ensuring that those things are carried out in a sustainable and um, a productive way for our nation. To what extent does your party acknowledge social justice as a way of moving the country forward? I think social justice is very important. A lot of times we find that in our country, our justice system fails our people. Our policing system fails our people on a daily basis. And what Arise South Africa seeks to do is to create a blockchain system out of our justice system, ensure that you know, court cases are not being swept under carpet or as the old agit goes, um, dockets are, are, have gone missing or, or you know, they're they, they lost or whatever the case is. We really want to ensure that everything that is in our justice system is well documented and that there are follow-ups that are done. So putting our, our justice system on a blockchain system, which is immutable, which cannot be corrupted, which cannot lose a docket, and also ensuring that we equip our courts to be able to function faster and more effectively. Equip them with intelligence, equip them with AI, equip them with technological aspects that can assist our court and the justice system become much more agile and much more better to deal with the issues. What are the beliefs and ideas underpinning the party's foreign policy? I think firstly we, we, we stand on the fact that the first act of coming into South Africa cannot be criminal. We cannot allow that somebody jumps over a border which is demarcated or, or takes off a fence which is demarcated and the first act of coming to the country is illegal. We cannot allow that. But also at the same time, we understand that we need to collaborate and work together with other countries in order to grow our nation. So we welcome the fact that legal people should be allowed in our country. But however, if somebody is an illegal immigrant, they must get out of the country and come back in the correct way, the legal way. And do you have a final message to our viewers and the public as we head into the polls? I think what's important is to realize that we're 30 years in. It's been 30 years since democracy. And really what we're seeing in our country is we're seeing our country dilapidate. We're seeing our country become worse and worse. And really my message out there is to say, let us give the future generation a chance. As an adult, you've got children. Where are you expecting your children to grow if the nation is falling apart? How are you expecting your children to be encouraged to get involved if the people they see in parliament are all pensioners? Let the adults begin to take responsibility and empower and vote for the future generation. Let the future generation also step up as young people like myself and ensure that we lead this nation to where it needs to go because the wealth is already in the country. The solutions are already here. We just need the support of the elderly, the mentorship of the elderly and the young people to arise and take up their rightful place in society. That was Mpo Dagad discussing his book, I Am The Vision.